Lord, I love you more, more than any day. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you that I love you more, more than any day. Oh, 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 I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I want to take the time and tell you I worship and adore you. I just want to say thank you. Thank you, team. Amen. 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 You ready for the word? Do move fast for them. Yeah. Yeah. To find them and know them. And Perfect song for our and message follow today. Follow us and send you the word of God. Amen. Everybody with your Bible and in your hand. If you need a Bible, you raise your hand. The usher will serve you. This is my Scriptures Bible. are going to come over here, but I am. sometimes they don't move what as fast. Says sometimes I they do move fast, but I want you this to be able to find overcomer. them and know them and and that's who and I follow am. us and say it is the word of God. Today Amen. I shall be taught. And repeating after me, we make this confession with good voices. I am what it says I am. Is receptive. This book called Van Overcomer. And that's who I am. I believe Today I shall be taught that faith comes. The infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. As I gladly receive the Word today. That understanding would come. And we thank you that we need light for light in Jesus' name. And we thank you, God, for what you are freely giving to us in this time. And Holy Spirit, guide us. And you are welcome here. Take us to where we need to be. Be our leader. Be our paraclete. Run alongside of us. And we thank you that we will come away not only informed, not only refreshed, but transformed. In the powerful name of Jesus. Amen and thank God. Amen. Amen. We're going to talk today about Jesus teaches forgiveness. Jesus teaches forgiveness. In a culture where hate rises, there is a causative factor, and that's because there is diminished forgiveness. You need light for light, but you need love for hate. Martin Luther King said that. And so as we move into this, this, this lesson, it's good, like I said last week, that I'm going to focus on Jesus all the way through to, to the 
to Easter Sunday and because we don't preach about Jesus himself as much as we need to in the church today. Jesus' ministry is riddled with forgiveness. But forgiveness is what I call a big gulp and a hard swallow. It's easier said than done. This week, I watched the movie The Magnificent Seven, a remake of an old classic with Denzel Washington. In the movie, a young woman's husband had been violently killed while speaking against a rich man who wanted to take all the land of the townspeople. Some of you might have seen it. So she hired some gunfighters, led by Denzel Washington's character, to go after the murderer and his army. When this woman was asked what did she want, righteousness or vengeance, she said, I want righteousness, but I'll take vengeance. And that's how we, for, we feel a lot. We want vengeance, but the word forgiveness did not enter in. Amen. Amen. Because we righteously feel like we should be avenged. Amen. I'm right and you're wrong. How many situations challenge our ability to forgive? If we should answer truthfully, there are many. And how you handle forgiveness is how you groove to handle forgiveness. If you don't forgive, it becomes... The place, you, the marker you go to for not forgiving in every situation. You just don't forgive. I think it was, I, I forget which person said this. He said, he said uh, uh, forgive but don't forget the names. <laughs> Into our lesson. Here comes one of the many stories from Jesus about forgiveness. And in the lesson is so many lessons, they could become a preach in the lessons inside of the lesson. And everybody should be looking up this way. I hope I don't have another issue. Luke 7, 36 through 38. Here becomes the first part of this reading. And we're just going to continue in the seventh uh, chapter of Luke. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. So Jesus was an invited guest to a Pharisee's house. Remember I said invited guest. He asked him to come eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house, which also made people nervous around him because it was a Pharisee. Jesus wasn't nervous, but the people around him were because, what are you dealing with them for? And sat down to eat. And while he was eating, and behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner. A woman in the city who was a sinner. It didn't say that nobody else was a sinner, but she was chronicled as a sinner above sinners. A woman. Didn't say what kind of sin she was in, but it said she was a sinner. You know her, she's the sinner. <laughs> are, are you listening? When she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil, and stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with her tears and wipe them with the hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. Now this is one of two incidents where Jesus is, is anointed with oil by a woman and his feet is kissed and anointed. The other one is Mary of Magdala who did it and, and prepared him for his burial is what Jesus told everybody. This is the other incident. And this woman is unknown. Some suppose that this was Mary Magdalene, but we have no evidence of this. It ought not to astonish you that there were two persons whose intense affection thus displayed itself. 
both women in, in, in both situations, and in our current one, it, it was displayed in a certain way. They anointed his feet and they honored him. And they loved Jesus as he was supposed to be loved. But let me talk about who was a sinner. This tells us more than that. She was a sinner in the sense that all people are. She was a particular notorious sinner. Her presence in the Pharisee's house showed courage and determination. Because first of all, she heard that Jesus was there, but she was uninvited. But she was after something. And, 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 and I don't know how to say this, but I'm just going to say it this way. Sometimes when you're after something and you need to get liberated, sometimes you have to break a rule. You, you, you got to get healed. You got to get free. So she, she literally invited herself in. But she was willing to do anything to express her love toward Jesus. So she didn't come in empty handed. Amen. Some of us want something, but we don't want to give anything. I want the blessing, but I don't want to pay anything to get it. And you say, Pastor, I, I shouldn't need to pay for a blessing. You need to you pay for everything else. If you go to Kroger... Your need does not make them give you your grocery. Amen. Unless you put a car down or something green or, or any other form of payment. Am I right? Amen. And ain't no love loss because ain't no relationship in there. Amen. It's just business. Amen. 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 All right, all right, all right. She brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Both the container and the contents show that this was an expensive gift she brought to honor Jesus. She was after something. Either I'm going to get him one way or another. I'm going to ask him, but then I'm going to come and I'm going to show my love. And I'm going to show it. And there's nothing wrong with showing your love. Now, what was this alabaster box? It was a, the oil was so costly it was put in almost with some kind of needle funnel and, and the flask had a narrow uh, 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 neck on it with a small cap that was just, just wedged in. And the only way many times to open it was to break it and to pour the oil out. It was costly as with Mary Magdalene's oil which cost a, a year's uh, 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 wages. This oil was costly. And obviously this woman was a woman of means. She was a sinner, but she was a rich sinner. Her service to Jesus was personal. Everybody say personal. personal. You need a personal Jesus. She did it all herself and all to him. Notice how many times, and I read it in the text. In case you didn't notice, I'm going to revisit it with how many texts, how many times in our text it said these pronouns? She three times and her twice. She knew Jesus sat at the table. Next one. She began to wash his feet. Next one. With her tears. Wiped them with her hair. She kissed his feet and anointed them with the oil. She brought the best gift she could get and humbled herself in front. Of him in the presence of others, she was burdened heavily, as according to scripture, she was a sinner. I keep making that point because she was a sinner, but she was burdened, as is the case with sin, it burdens you. But this is not a case about sin, this is a story about getting it together. It's about forgiveness. It's about coming back. It's about going to somebody that can help. My God. Let's visit the scene. When she entered the house, they were reclined at a table. In that day, they rested on one arm 
close to the table where they could feed themselves with both hands and pull the, the, the tray or whatever with the food on it and they would use their, whichever hand was prominent, that's the one that they would use to feed themselves while they were laying in a repose or reclined position and their feet were extended behind them or off to the side of them, which became an opportune place for the woman to come in. Normally, you would anoint the head, but what she did is that she went to Jesus' feet and she began to anoint them, and she began to weep, and she began to wash them with her hair. First of all, just how she came in was, 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 was wrong, but what she was doing was right. First of all, the fact that her hair was loose showed that she didn't respect the custom of other women. Because everybody else's hair was tied down and covered. But she came in with her flowing locks hanging down and she didn't have a towel with her because she decided to use them as a towel for his feet. Sometimes you got to use what you got to get to where you got to go. And we keep looking, making excuses. I can't do nothing because I don't have a towel. Well, what's available to you? Pull your shirt tail out if you need to. I've got to wash his feet. I've got to put something on him. I've got to show him that I love him. And she didn't have a water basin. And, 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 and she wasn't doing pretty crying. She was doing ugly crying. The kind that make your whole face wet and tears are dripping down on your chest. And she was doing ugly crying because... Because her, her, her pain was big. Her sin was big. She was a notorious sinner. She was a notorious big of that day. So she was using what she had. I didn't bring a bowl. I didn't bring no water. I didn't bring no towel. Because I got what I need. I got hair and I got tears. And when you need to get something from Jesus, something has to come off of you. Something has to come out of you. And, and, and something has to make him know, I, you want this. This, this, is, this is heavy for me. This is for real for me. This is something I got to do. And I'm breaking all the rules to get to where I need to be. Just like the woman who had to touch the hem of his garment. She knew she was unclean. She wasn't supposed to touch him. She was unclean. Every time she had a menstruation and, and there was a flow of blood, she was unclean for so many days. So she wasn't supposed to, but she never stopped bleeding. So you do what you got to do. Come on, come on, come on. You do what you got to do. Yeah. Verse 39 here has said, the Pharisee had said in his heart. Now the Pharisee was watching this scene. He dared not open his mouth because Jesus didn't open his mouth while she was doing that to him. But in his heart he said this. But it was always amazing, just like I did, told you last week, how Jesus read their thoughts. You're sitting at the table with him, and, he's, and, and, and the reason why they know he read their thoughts because he told them what was in their heart, and he would pose it with, he would st make a statement, or either he would, he, would, he would ask them a question. So, so the Pharisee had said in his heart, if this man was really a prophet, he would know what kind of woman touched him. That's why many people thought she was a prostitute. That wasn't necessarily the case. But he said, he ought to know, he, he, you're, you're better than what's touching you. But my thing is, I put a side note here. The truth is, what better person to touch Jesus than somebody who needs Jesus? So touch him. Nasty. <laughs> That's what he's there for. Moreover, in the reading here in verse 40, and I'm just sharing it with you. And Jesus answered and said to him, Simon, that, that was the name of the Pharisee. I have something to say to you. 
So he said, teacher said, oh, wrong move. And, and here comes the story. Here comes the story Jesus shared with him. And it starts in verse 41. There was a certain creditor who had two debtors. One owed 500 denarii and the other 50. And when they had nothing with which to repay. Everybody say nothing. nothing. He freely forgave them both. Now how many of you would be glad if some of your debtors were saved? Y'all just got it happy at the prospect. <laughs> just, the, uh, just the dream of it. Amen. One debt was great and the other one was not so great. 550. Is that what it said? Yeah. And when they had nothing with which to repay, he freely, come on somebody. Yeah. That means no strings attached. Yeah. It wasn't pay me when you get it. Because he knew they wouldn't have it. Amen. Pay me when you get. No, no, no. No strings attached. When you do bring it back, you owe 500, it'll be 600. Oh. That 50, bring, bring, bring 80 back. You don't have to pay it today, but come back. <laughs> That's what your creditors say today. Miss the due date and fall out the grace period. And they'll sign some money to you. I just did it the other day. I omitted paying, uh, paying one of my bills. I'm real timely with it. I, I, I honor that kind of thing. I, I, I make sure that it gets in. I'm not perfect. And so I slept it. And I looked at my account, and they had had a $25 late fee. Well, you know what I did? <laughs> I did the Madea. And I punched some numbers in, and when I called them, this was my appeal. I'm never late. So I want you to take it off. Let me check your record. And the guy said, well, well, you know what? You, you're right. We, 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 we'll, we'll just put that back in your account. But what happened, what helped it was I was never late. And because they put it back, I'm still not late. <laughs> it, it, it makes sense. It'll help you in the long haul. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and he said, tell me, therefore, here continues to read, which of them will love him more? The creditor. Which one will love the one they owe the most? Simon answered and said, I suppose the one whom he forgave more. And he said to him, you have rightly judged. But what he didn't know is that the story wasn't about a story. It was about you and the woman. Maybe you only are a 50 denarii and she is a 500. But whichever one owed the most had the most to repay back that had been forgiven, loved more. So what she did for him was extravagant. While you're sitting there judging on 50 denarii. Are, are you following me? So you have to be careful how you see folk love because maybe they love him because they've been forgiven a whole lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Over some heavy duty issues. So they don't, they're, they're saying, I love you this much. Yeah. And if I had more than that, I'd love you that much. Yeah. But unless you get to that place. In forgiveness and understanding forgiveness, you'll constantly be doling it out like it's so minimal. But he should have joined her and said, I'm going to do the same thing you're doing. Because my stuff just as bad. 
But we rate stuff. We look at the other person. Oh, I'm not as bad as them. Oh, they terrible. They worse than anything I ever seen. I only do something every now and then. <laughs> oh, uh, no, no. I ain't like them. <laughs> Woo. Verse 44 through 48. Here comes the review, the rebuke, rather. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. See, Jesus was assessing him all the time. I entered your house because you asked me. Is it possible that we ask Jesus, but we still don't make him welcome? See, it's a difference between asking him to come into your heart and making him welcome. Ooh. Are y'all out there? Does that make any sense? Yeah, I accepted Jesus, but did you make him welcome in your house? And if you think I'm talking about a building, you missed it. I'm talking about into the house of your heart. Did you welcome him into your heart? Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water, which is an oddity. It was not the custom. When somebody came to your house, you got a basin and a tile, towel, and you throw it over your arm, and you got on your knees, and you washed their feet as they came in. Each guest. You invited in. You washed their feet as they came. But you let Jesus just come. You throw the door on the food. They're at a table. Just, just come on in. You hear? Sit down. You gave me no water for my feet. But she has washed my feet with her tears. And wiped them with the hair of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time I came in. She didn't try to kiss the top of his head. She didn't try to kiss his jaw. She kissed his feet. The part that's in the dirt the most. She said, I just want to, to come close enough to show him and to pour my love on him. Therefore, I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. Why? Because she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. See, if, 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 if you keep saying it like it's little, 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 you love little. Whew. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Jesus saw her love, repentance, and devotion, and it was in demonstration. Repentance is a demonstration. It's a demonstration. It ain't just a book. It's a demonstration. It's an activity. It's a verb. Repent. Turn away. It's not easy, but it's an activity. Love is an activity. Forgiveness is an activity. It's practice. Whew. My God. Quote. Number one. Here's quote number one. There is no love without forgiveness. And no forgiveness without love. You can't say you love people and you won't forgive them. And we try to make forgiveness on our own terms and we try to give it a lot of, lot of, lot of superficial weight that has judgment in it, but just forgive.
Simon the Pharisee did not see the woman as she was. A humble sinner seeking forgiveness, pouring out love for Jesus because he looked at her as she had been, a notorious sinner. And, and like it or lump it, people will always see you for what you used to be. But that shouldn't change how you view them. Keep looking at me this way. I forgive you and keep on stepping. But when you change, you want everybody to like you. Newsflash, they're not going to. Because they'd rather keep you a sinner. They'd rather keep you a sinner. Because that keeps the playing field level. Because if you get bumped up, where does that leave them? Well, who am I? With your 50 denarii self. <laughs> Does that make sense? It is not easy for us to blot out a past or to free ourselves from all prejudice resulting from our knowledge of that past. Yet that is what exactly what the Lord does. Here comes the next quote. When you forgive, you in no way change the past. But you sure do change the future. You don't change the past. That's done. It happened. You did it. You're guilty. Some of the results of it are still with you. But it don't change the past. But it sure does change the future. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. And he does so. Jesus does. Not unrighteously, but righteously. He knows the power of his own grace. And that he completely cancels the past. And that's what this woman did. She came and said, I'm appealing to your grace to counsel the bad. Simon the, the Pharisee denied Jesus the common courtesy from a host to a guest. So he criticized the woman for giving these courtesies to Jesus because it embarrassed him. And sometimes you ought to love so that it makes people nervous. They want you to get mad and angry and cut the food. But love enough to make them get tight. Are y'all listening to me? Don't be distracted. Love them enough so that, that it make them, them okay. Something, something happening different here because this ain't the way this script's supposed to read. You're supposed to be cussing your head off by now. You're supposed to be throwing some blows by now. But you, instead, you, you, you loving me, but, 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 but you know I, I did this. You know I did, but you know I, you, 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 you know I did. Jesus noticed neglect, but he appreciated devotion. He did not reject deeply emotional devotion. He will not reject repentance. He will receive your kiss and your tears that say, forgive me. She never said it out of her mouth, but her actions spoke louder than words. He will acknowledge your request to be cleansed as you wash his feet. Oh, that's what you need. She was showing him what she needed. What do you need? Well, what am I doing? What do you need? What am I showing you? My God. Next quote. Forgiveness is not an occasional act. It is a permanent attitude. Martin Luther King. 
And finally, as, as we close out this message, the thing that pleased Jesus, that was the under, undergirding piece to this whole message of love, forgiveness, repentance, washing, cleansing, sinner turned to, to a saved person, is that she operated in something. This operation that she operated in is what made her bust into the Pharisee house. And, and, and it's in verse 50. Then he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. See, you need faith to be saved. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I'm going to be rejected. I need to repent. I need to be saved. And so I'm getting to Jesus. And when I get to him, I'm not going to pretty cry. I'm going to lay out on him. I'm going to say, I, 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 I'm going to do whatever I need to do to show him that I need him. And Jesus in turn said to her, your faith has saved you. That's all you need to do is, is trust him in faith and he'll save you. And every one of us that's saved, that's what saved us. We, we bust up. What do we bust up in? We were standing in a church full of people. And if you let embarrassment get a hold of you, or if you let pride get a hold of you, you'll stay in your seat. But if you dare say, forget all that. I don't care what the Pharisees may think of me. I'm getting to Jesus. And as her faith saved her, your faith can save you today. Yes. It's called saving faith. Yes. You got enough faith to get saved. Yes. Yes. You had enough faith to get saved. Yes. Ooh. And, and, and the same thing that pleased Jesus is what God says, please me. Yes. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. So if you're going to please him, come in faith. Yeah. He don't care that your name is good in the, in the town as being the best sinner. He don't care. He don't care if you got to bust into a Pharisee house where he is to get to him. Find him. He don't care if your best friend came to church with you. I don't want him to think all that. You need to assess, are they able to save? They're able to judge, but they're not able to save. And you might help them with your courage. You get up, they say, okay, I can do that too. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has saved you. What can you bring to Jesus that will tell him, forgive me? What can you give him? Just come bring your ugly cry. Bring your ugly cry. You realize you're a mess. Are you listening? Listen at me. That's why you're here. Do you realize that he recognizes tears? Anybody remember when you came to the Lord and and how you saw, you didn't want nobody to know, but you couldn't stop the tears from flowing. Anybody has God delivered and did something for you, and you tried to be cool, and something started shaking on the inside of you, and mess you. some of y'all ain't been there, you just been in church all of your life, so it becomes habitual to you. And so you got common with, you, you are 50 denarii, but I'm talking about somebody that stuff was big. You were bigly in debt. Oh, that's not my word, bigly. But you were bigly in debt. And you realize, it, and at some point, that thing sat on you. You realize, I, ain't, I don't have it together. It's not all right. I want it to be this way, but it's not all right. And so after a while, that thing wrestled with you. And before you start crying, you were already in a wrestling match. You were tossing and turning because... What God told you about himself, you already knew in your heart. And so you keep wanting to do it in your flesh, so you keep wrestling. 
But I want to tell you, you might get up with a limp, but God will deliver you. One day you're going to have to get out of the wrestling match and say, I submit. I'm sorry. I did it. And that's when he say, come here. Come here. Your faith has saved you. Blessings to you today. <laughs> Come on, give him a good praise in him. Your faith has saved you. He don't care where you're at. He don't care how much debt you're in. I think the bigger the debt, the more the grace. Just help me get out from up under it. And I want to go to the one that won't assign any interest rate. And I want to go to the one that can say, you're forgiven freely. Anybody been forgiven freely? Turn to somebody and say, no charge. Come on, give him a praise in this house. No charge. When he carry me back to the day when you save me and how you still keep me, and some days when we're not exactly where we need to be, when, 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 when we're at closer to that 500 denarii level, his, his grace is sufficient. And while you're working through, pour your love on him. Pour it on him. Pour it on him. You don't have a rag, but use what you got. Because he loves you. He said, I came seeking that which was lost. Seeking to save that which is lost. So while she was looking for him, he really was looking for her. Because that's why he was here. <laughs> you didn't find him, he really found you. Because <laughs> you didn't want to be found. And if the truth be told, you still don't want to be found. But he's still looking. That's why he came. Just quickly, everybody look there and say, keep looking, Jesus. Thank him for keep looking. Listen to me, we want to make these calls. This call is for salvation, for somebody to surrender their life to the Lord. Next, that's one. The next one is two. To be restored back to the body of Christ and say, thank you, Jesus, for, for looking. Third one is to be filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking. I did all of them at one time. If you, if you want to return back to him, that's number four. Salvation. Return to the Lord. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the fourth one is then is to, to become part of the church. Whichever one you, you feel a need to, that's where I am, Pastor. Forgiveness is available to you. This woman stands for every one of us. Be it 500 denarii or 50, she stands there. If that's you, just wherever you are, just slip up a hand. All we're going to do is pray for you. I see your hand. Just slip it on up. Put it up high enough so I can see it. Put them up. 
Amen. Whichever one you raised it for. But in particular, if you're raising it to be saved, put that hand up. I want to see it if you want to be saved. Amen. 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 Now, the next thing I'm going to ask you to do, because we don't want to embarrass anybody, you can put your hand down. We want to pray for you and believe for your life. We don't care where it is. We, we want to believe for your life. And then we're going to pray for every other one of those calls that I made. But this first one is for salvation, coming into the kingdom of God. That's you. What I want you to do is in faith. You got faith for it today. Just get up from wherever you are. Come down the aisle, stand in front of us, and we're going to pray with you. We're not going to ask you to say anything. Just come on. Just come on. Come on. You bring her. Amen. That's all right. That's all right. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. You know you're doing that kind of crying I was talking about, don't you? Everybody, we're going to say the same confession with her, both of you. You say the same one. Look up at me. Look up at me. You can do that. Father, in Jesus' name, I repent of sin, and I give you my life. Today, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. Today, I turn my back on the enemy of the world and I accept you as my Lord to the glory of God today I believe a miracle that one day you raised Jesus from the dead and that he came seeking the lost and to save us thank you Jesus for saving me today. Now, everybody all over the room, I want you to celebrate them. Come on. I said celebrate them. back to your seat after this service some counselors are going to talk to you about the decision you made hey man i love your shoes i bless you you can go back come on give them another hand heaven is rejoicing and for anybody else for restoration to be filled with the holy spirit Come back to God. Any one of those three. If you are in that place, we're not going to embarrass you again. We're going to pray for you. Believe for your life. I'm serious about this thing today. You, you, I've always been serious. I'm serious about this today. If you fall within one of those three, lift up a hand and say, Pastor, that's where I am today. Father, we thank you.
for saving the lost. Set captive free. We thank you for an unknown lady. <laughs> that's some, that brought some oil and some tears. And broke it over your feet. Washed it with your hair. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God a good praise in this house. Amen, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's receive our gift.